in this lesson, we want to talk about variables in JavaScript, and we also want to talk about using console.log to show an output. So we can think about a variable in JavaScript as a box or a container that's used to store some value for our use kind of later on in the program. So the value might be constant, meaning it's not going to change throughout the program, or it might change. So for example, suppose you're making some type of game. Throughout the game, you're going to keep track of a lot of different things, such as the player score, and this is likely going to change over time. So for example, let's say you made a very simple game, and this game is just where a player runs around and collects coins. Well, every time the player collects another coin, you need to kind of have a way to update or keep track of the player score, and a variable is an excellent way to do that. So let's go ahead and get started with the lesson today. And what I want to do first is just make a file to work with. So I have this Explorer open. Okay, if you don't, you can go to View and then Explorer, and that's going to open that up for you. And then I want to go right here. You see where I'm hovering over and it says New File? I want to click that, and I want to create a new file. So I just want to say variables.js. You can name this whatever you want. Just make sure it ends with .js so it knows that it's JavaScript. I'm also going to open a new terminal. And you can open this here, or you can use the terminal that's built into your machine, whether you're on a Mac or Windows. There's a terminal built into each of those. Additionally, you can use git bash if you want. All right, so what I want to do is put some comments in here to just kind of section things off. This is just going to be a quick lesson where we talk about variables. So to make a single line comment in JavaScript, you want two forward slashes. And what we're going to do is we're going to type in var. And then I'm going to put two forward slashes and type in let, and then two forward slashes and type in const. So these are the three ways to declare a variable in JavaScript. Now, before we go any further, I want to bring up a browser, and I want to type in MDN statements. So MDN statements, okay? So the very first link that shows up for me is statements and declaration JavaScript MDN. And this is what you want to click on. So statements and declaration, and this is on MDN, which is the Mozilla Developer Network. When you study JavaScript, this is going to come up all the time. This is an excellent resource to use. So if we scroll down here, we're going to see under declarations, var, let, and const. So when this lesson is over, this is something you can kind of go to for a reference on these three. So var, let, and const. I'm just going to warn you in advance, when you first start looking at documentation that exists on MDN or some other site, it's going to be a bit tough to understand. And that's just because you don't have all the fundamentals of JavaScript down yet. As you progress through your kind of learning experience, this is going to get much easier for you. Okay, so let's close this and let's go back here and let's talk about var, let, and const. So first and foremost, var is the old way to create a variable. There are a few different disadvantages to using var, so we're going to kind of stay away from it in the course. I'll just bring it up when we want to show a comparison. So when we want to declare a variable using var, we're just going to say var and then space and then the name of our variable. Now, there are certain rules for naming a variable. Your name must begin with a letter, an underscore, or a dollar sign. The name can't contain spaces, and you can't use a reserved word or a word from the reserved kind of keywords list. So if you want to know what those words are, you can Google search them. But again, as you kind of progress through JavaScript, you're going to figure out what these words are because there are words that are going to go with the language. So like var is an example. If I typed in var, var, that's not going to work, right? You see how things light up red on the left-hand side. Or if I typed in var function, for example, function is a key word, okay? So you can't use those. Again, you also can't use something like a number. So if I typed in three to start this thing off, that doesn't work. It's got to start with either a letter, an underscore, or a dollar sign. So if I put dollar sign three, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. So I'm going to start out by saying that I want my variable to be first name. So first and then name. Now, notice the notation that I used here. This is called camel case. And the reason camel case is important is because you can't have a space in a variable either. I can't put a space there. That's also illegal. Okay, see how everything turns red. So what we do is we take the kind of first word, which is first, and we put it in all lowercase. Then the second word, the first letter is an uppercase. So the N in name is an uppercase, and that's known as your camel case notation. Now notice that I ended this kind of statement here with a semicolon. This is optional, okay? 
But I'm just going to warn you in advance, if you go to minify code, which you're definitely going to do later on, you're going to have problems if you don't use semicolons. I know a lot of people don't use them, but my personal preference is to use them so you don't run into problems later on. Okay, so we have var, first name, and then semicolon. So let's see what this is looking like on our program. And to do that, we're going to output something. So we're going to say console.log. And inside of these kind of parentheses we're going to set up, we're going to type out the kind of name of our variable, which is first name. And we're going to put a semicolon, okay? So this is going to give us an output to this terminal here. So let's go here and we're going to type out node space and then the name of the JavaScript file. Now, make sure the file is saved before you do this. So variables.js. And when I hit enter, I'm going to see undefined. So enter and you see how undefined came up. So what does undefined mean? Well, basically, in this context, when you create a variable with var and you don't give it a value right away, JavaScript is going to set the value for you to undefined, okay? So this is also true when we use let. So let's go to let. So we're gonna put let, and I'm gonna put last name and then console.log last name. And then let's go ahead and run this again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type out clear and then enter, and that's gonna clear your terminal. And then you can hit your up arrow twice to cycle through the commands. And I'm gonna hit that again. And you see we get undefined and undefined again, okay? So when we set up a variable, we might also want to give it a value right away. And to do that, we're going to use the equal sign, which in JavaScript is the assignment operator. So I can say var first name is equal to, and then on the right side of the equal sign, I'm going to put a value, okay? And I'm going to be using a string. And if we use a string, okay, just some text, you might as well say, I'm going to put it inside of either double quotes or single quotes. So my first name is John, so I'm just going to use that. And it would be perfectly valid to use single quotes but notice how I get an error here. Everything's turning red over here because I used a single quote and a double quote together. So let's erase that. So this is valid and the other way is valid. Just don't mix them, okay? And then for last name, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. So I'm gonna declare it here. And then down here, I'm gonna say last name is equal to, and it's gonna be green, okay? So let's put our semicolon and let's go ahead and clear the terminal. And now let's view our output. So now we get John Green. We get John as the value for first name. That's where that came from. We get Green as the value for the last name. That's where that came from. So at this point, it doesn't look like var and let are any different, but I promise you they are. Let me show you a couple of different ways that they're different. And it takes a thorough understanding of JavaScript to go through all the ways they're different. So I'm just gonna show you something that's very basic at this point. So the first thing is I'm gonna type in var again, and then first name, and now I'm gonna say it's Steve. So what do you think the output is gonna to be to the console? Is it gonna be John or is it gonna be Steve? If you guess Steve, then you'd be correct. So let's clear this and let's go to this. So we get Steve in green. So the first value of John was overwritten, right? Let's say I try to do this again. So I'm gonna change this up a little bit. I'm going to just kind of move this. So I'm going to declare this and assign it on one line now. So let last name equal green. And now I'm going to go down here. I'm going to say let last name equal Smith. Okay. So we're going to get an error from this. So let's go through that. Let's clear this out and let's run this. And you see that you get an error. What it says is identifier last name has already been declared. You cannot redeclare last name with let. Okay, this is one of the good things. And you might say, oh, that's kind of annoying. But let's say you're working on a project with more than one person. Let's say there's five people or 10 people or 100 people. And there's other ways to kind of protect your kind of privacy of your variable. And we'll get to those later on. But let's say you don't have any of those methods. Let's just say you just have a file and it's one long file and this is all you have. Well, if you declare the same variable name twice with let, it's going to throw an error and tell you, hey, you've already done this, and it's going to warn you. Otherwise, something might get overwritten, like if you're using var, and you might have wanted the first name to be John, and now it's Steve, because somebody later on just thought that was a good name to use. Okay, they said first name again, and they overwrote kind of the value of your variable that you were expecting. 
So that's why let comes in handy. Now, there is a way to kind of reassign things with let. You just get rid of the let part of this and it's perfectly valid. That way we're not redeclaring it, we're just reassigning, okay, reassigning something to that variable. So now it's going to say Steve Smith. So let's clear this out and let's go back and we get Steve Smith. Okay, so nice and simple. All right, so lastly, let's talk about const. So with const, you have to give it a value when you kind of declare it. So let's say I say const, let's say middle name, for example, and I don't give it any value. And let's say I say console.log middle name, and we're gonna have an issue here. So let's go through and clear this and let's run our program. So you see that it's missing initializer and const declaration. So because when we work with a constant, it has a special property where you can't change the value, okay, that you've assigned to it. So it's going to be the same throughout the program. And this is very helpful because again, if you're working on a project with a lot of people and you wanna make sure something doesn't get overwritten, you can use const. With let, you have some protection because if the person comes back and says let and then that same variable name, it's going to warn you, okay? Now, you can still use the variable name and assign something different to it if you want to change the value, that's fine. But with const, it's not going to let you change it at all. So, for example, let's say I say const middle name equals, let's say Joe, okay? And then I'm going to hit save and let's clear this out and let's run this again. Well, now I have Steve Smith Joe, okay? And I should probably move this up here so that it's in the correct order. And let's say that, for example, let me just run this one more time so you see it works. So we have Steve Joe Smith. Let's just say, for example, we try to reassign. So let's say we say middle name is equal to Sarah, for example. Okay, so let's go back and run our program again. And let me just clear it out. And we're gonna see that assignment to constant variable, that's our error there. So I'm going to get rid of this and our program works, so clear. And once more, we'll just run this and we get Steve Joe Smith. All right, so that's it for this lesson today. Very, very basic. We just kind of went over kind of the three ways you can declare a variable. First, there's var, which is kind of the old school way. And we're not going to use that too often throughout the course, but we will bring it up when we want to kind of talk about, you know, the difference between var and let. Then we have let, which allows us to assign a variable, okay? And we can change the value of the variable using let, okay? So if you declare it with let, it's okay, it can change. And then we have const, okay? With const, the value is not going to change. It's going to constantly be the same. 